Hi, this is Jerry Amernick. I'm the author of the book Babe Ruth, A Superstar's Legacy, which is now available on Amazon and in print and as an ebook and at the site baberuthlegacy.com. Last year, an exhibit was held at the National Portrait Gallery at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. It was part of the One Life series, which dedicates an entire gallery to the biography of a single person. The idea is to tell the story of America through individuals who have shaped its culture. Now, the series has focused on people like Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, Ronald Reagan, <clears throat> all of them presidents. It's looked at Robert E. Lee, Martin Luther King Jr., Elvis Presley, Thomas Paine, who was one of the founding fathers of the United States. But last June, June 2017, an exhibit wound up, and that one was about somebody else, Babe Ruth. Today we're talking to James Barber, who is a uh, historian of some repute and the curator at the National Portrait Gallery at the Smithsonian. It was his idea to do the Babe Ruth exhibit. Uh, James, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. So tell us, first of all, uh, a little bit about you and, and your background uh, at the Smithsonian. I'm an American historian, and I'm with the History Office at the Smithsonian, and the, uh, the National Portrait Gallery uh, of the Smithsonian. And uh, the Portrait Gallery is a, a museum of history and biography that uses art as a medium, art in all its many forms, whether it be um, paintings, sculpture, photographs, it could be performance art, it could be uh, interviews, it could be uh, oral history, um, just as long as, you know, whatever art form or uh, medium that we can capture a person's life. Okay, and as I understand, it was your idea to do one of these exhibits on Babe Ruth? Yes, it was. Uh, what gave me that idea, I, I can't recall. <clears throat> Babe Ruth has always been a a fascination of mine, I think, since I, since sixth grade, when I first read a, a biography of him. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And his uh, his birthplace is just right up the road uh, from Washington in Baltimore, and uh, he, I, he's always had that Baltimore association, and so I remember uh, going up and visiting his birthplace, uh, the, the house, which is very near Camden um, Yards, the, the home of the Baltimore Orioles. Right. And uh, so uh, there's a lot, a lot of history up there. Babe so, Ruth is part of it. Right. So are you, uh, in, in particular, a sports fan, a baseball fan, or is it just something out of history that kind of struck your imagination? I am not a, uh, a, a, a baseball fan. Although I like baseball, I'm a tennis fan. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, team sports were never, never, uh, could never come up to uh, the individual sport of tennis. But anyway, Babe Ruth, I mean, he he, uh, he cuts across many uh, many interests, and uh, you know, I, everyone has been fascinated by what he was able to do, and. Then, after a little bit of, of digging into his life, I became fascinated by his life. Um, yeah. Now, now, James, you're you're a, an expert on uh, American presidents, the military, Civil War, American history, and I mentioned some of the names that the One Life series has focused on before. And and since the uh, Smithsonian has been doing these exhibits, it's it's actually a pretty short list of names. You haven't done too many. So you got Abraham Lincoln, you have Ulysses S. Grant, Martin Luther King. How is it that a baseball player, Babe Ruth, uh, is in that uh, pantheon of, of American individuals, uh, and, that, and that would merit an exhibit like this? Well, that's a that's a great question because it really gets at um, what the portrait gallery is all about, and it's about, um, of course, it's about notable Americans that have made a contribution to um, American society. But also, um, it's that medium of art. It's you know, we we can't do any any person without the images. And Babe Ruth uh, certainly uh, through photography and, and all, uh, he has many images. So the, the certain people 
that uh, just lend themselves to an exhibition. Uh, Abraham Lincoln would be one. Uh, the great uh, Massachusetts statesman, and, uh, Daniel Webster, is another one. One of the most uh, portrayed Americans of the uh, first half of the 19th century. Henry Clay is another one. Why do you do Henry Clay? Well, because his images are in the hundreds. The, uh, the, the portraits are wonderful. So, so we look at, uh, you know, in finding a subject, we look at someone that's, that we can portray through portraiture. All right. And as I understand, during his heyday, uh, Babe Ruth, uh, in some circles, uh, I've been told this, that he may have been the most a photographed person in America in the 1920s and 30s and even up to his death in 1948. Well, that's, that's probably true. And uh, along those lines, also um, in the, at least the late 20s and 30s, uh, he was probably one of the um, one of two people that made the newspapers as much or more than the president of the United States. And the other person I'm thinking of would be Will Rogers, who had his own the the, the great American humorist, right, and star and whatnot, um, who would uh, die tragically in 1935. But uh, Babe Ruth and Will Rogers were in the papers every day. Now, when we talked earlier, and, and one chapter in my book, it does uh, get into this uh, exhibit at the Smithsonian, you had mentioned to me once before that um, you, you're a, an expert on, uh, you know, uh, illustrious, famous figures from American history, and, and you, you told me once that there are two characters that stand out for you, Teddy Roosevelt and Babe Ruth. Why those two? Jim? Yeah, you're breaking up a little oh, bit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. Would you like me to, to talk yeah. about those two characters? Yeah, yeah. Teddy Roosevelt and uh, Babe Ruth. What What is it about those two in particular that that stands out for you? Well, I just had never encountered um, two lives uh, each separately. On uh, it was uh, uh, just 20 years ago, 1998, um, when we opened the Theodore Roosevelt show. And Theodore Roosevelt. What struck me about Theodore Roosevelt is is the, the amount of living uh, that he would manage to package in, in just 60 years. He didn't live all that long. Um, basically, uh, he wore out, as he used to like to say, you can, you can live your life, you can, you can wear out, or you can rust out. And, uh, but <clears throat> Roosevelt, for me, lived three lives. Uh, one was his... Uh, you know, the, the strenuous life, he used to call, and that was, uh, you know, just, uh, he was a, a public servant for many, many years, so the, he had his professional life and his presidential career. He also had his sporting life, which was a big part of, of his world, as well as his writing life. His, his writings alone would have kept most people, most authors, um, that would have been a life's career right then and there. Uh, Babe Ruth is much the same way uh, in that he lived several lives too, his baseball life, his personal life, and what I call his secret life, that's another story, that's a life that um, uh, he had money and he had a wild, uh, uh, you know, postseason life, if you will, and right. uh, he had money to, to, to buy silence. Um, so, but we, you know, his, his baseball career and his, his own personal life, um, you know, he managed to, to, to do a lot of living in what, sure. uh, how old was he, 53? 53 you know, like, when he died, not even as long uh, as Teddy yeah. Roosevelt, right. Yeah. yeah. But I gather he's he was featured in this exhibit, not just because of his baseball prowess. There's more to it than that. Right. Well, I, uh, we tried to, in this one room with about uh, in 30 some objects, we tried to um, find portraiture for the most part that <clears throat> looked at aspects of his personal life, uh, his marriage, and um, whatnot. His, certainly his life in baseball, which included, uh, you know, you have to 
you have to have a, a Babe Ruth bat and, and ball uh, in, a, in an exhibit. Um, so some of his baseball paraphernalia, we looked at his marketability. He was the first one to have a business manager. Um, and uh, some of the objects in there was uh, we had a uh, the, the the carton for um, Babe Ruth underwear and <laughs> this famous chocolate bar, not not the Baby Ruth. That's another story. Yes, called, it was called Ruth's Home Run Chocolate. <laughs> right. Um, so he was um, tremendously marketable, and this was really a first. Uh, he was really one of the first to be that way. Then we looked at also Ruth the Icon, right. and um, this is really the special, one of the specialties of the Portrait Gallery, because we used, I think, about five or uh, half a dozen prints from the gallery's collection of Babe Ruth, one being a 1976 a Time Magazine cover, the original, I'm not talking about the printed cover, I'm talking about the print, the actual original art right. that Jack Davis did. It was a caricature of Babe Ruth sitting atop Yankee Stadium, and the reason for this um, this cover, and uh, there was always a cover story to go along with the cover, was the uh, the reopening of uh, Yankee Stadium after it had been renovated. Made right. Renovated. So that was 1976, which was yes. uh, what 28 years after Babe Ruth died. And who's the one they want to put in the cover of Time? It was Babe Ruth, and not one of the Yankees uh, who were current at that time. Right, yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's the house that Ruth, Ruth built. Exactly, right. And I, I remember seeing that cover. It was interesting because you have this huge, like a caricature of Ruth sitting on top of Yankee Stadium, and the, and the fans are coming in under his legs to go in into the stadium. That's right. So that was quite something. Can you tell us about some of the other uh, things that were in the exhibit as well? I think you had a cover from Vanity Fair magazine uh, in the early 30s. Uh, right, there was a Vanity Fair magazine, and um, one of the images that really is unique of all the hundreds of thousands of photographs that were made of Babe Ruth, we were able to borrow an original print from the Library of Congress, and this is what this was a print of Babe Ruth in 1920 when he had just signed with the New York Yankees, right? And he's uh -huh. in Yankee uniform. And what distinguishes this is, is that it's, it's an original printed photograph. Um, most of the, the images, uh, we had a, a few other original photographs, but most of the, the photography, uh, a lot of it is so much the original prints are lost. I mean, we have, you know, copies of these, but, but this was really special and it was, it's special too because he signed it. It's a, it's a posed image of Babe Ruth standing with uh, holding a bat on his shoulder, but he signed this, and his signature is mm -hmm. is noteworthy too. Um, it was mechanically done. I mean, it's Ruth's signature right. mechanically, yeah. you know, applied to the picture or the photograph. But he took great care in that signature. Yes, All he did. Time. And it's it's you know it's letter perfect. Uh, the Xavier brothers at uh, St. Mary's Industrial School, they, um, they, they, uh, they taught Ruth well, his penmanship. And uh, maybe that was with the help of a ruler, I don't know. But, um, but it's, uh, and, and it, all his signatures look the same. I mean, yeah, no, he, he was known for having a very neat and legible signature. And, and uh, you know, in some circles they say he invented the autograph, so, because he signed so many... Yeah, autographs. Yeah. Um, I've come across a, a number of collectible items. There was a baseball that he signed, a single baseball from the 1927 season when he hit a 60 homers. That baseball went at auction for almost $400,000. A single yeah. signed baseball, which is incredible. Almost $400,000 for a baseball signed by Babe Ruth. But, but uh, James, I want to read something here from the Smithsonian, which uh, was, uh, I guess, a, a release that went out <clears throat> when this exhibit opened, which, as I gather, was, um, was around May 31st, 2016, around that time, and the exhibit went for, what, 11 months, I believe? Right, and, right. and this is from the Smithsonian. It says, This exhibition examines Babe Ruth as a baseball legend and the marketing frenzy his name and image fueled before the commercialization of sports superstars became routine. 
It said Ruth was arguably the most portrayed American from the beginning of his professional career in the major leagues in 1914 to his death in 1948. No president, no Hollywood star or athlete so enjoyed the limelight for as long as Babe Ruth. No, those are words from the Smithsonian and that's, that's pretty heavy stuff coming from an institution like yours about a baseball player. <laughs> Right, that's uh, about a baseball player, correct. Um, well, I mean, uh, you know, when you think back at, at that time, um, there were years where, you know, maybe a movie star or whatnot might have gotten more more face time, but, um, but for the length of time, yes. you know, that's what distinguishes Babe Ruth. You know, from the time he started in baseball, in what, uh, 1914. Right, as a until, pro professional, yes. Yeah, Yeah. up until, you know, the, the, the time of his death and even after, um, you know, Babe Ruth was, was before the public. And I, I really can't, I mean, no president, certainly no president uh, had that length of, you know, had that run. Of, I mean, for four years or for eight years, they were right. um, they were front page news quite frequently. But you know, after once they left office, uh, you ex presidents just sort of disappear, at least in Bruce day. Yeah, yeah. I think I think there's a lot of truth to that. And also, if you're looking at even the sports world, when athletes retire, they, they kind of disappear. But but that certainly hasn't right. happened with Ruth. In fact, his his daughter Julia who is 101. I spent an afternoon with her at her home a few years ago, and she told me today her father, she calls him daddy, she said he's bigger today than he was when he was alive, which I thought was quite a statement. <laughs> yeah, that that is, and she's um, probably, you know, w w what kept Babe Ruth alive, uh, in, in a way, was that record, 714, and, you know, Every baseball player that's that had that recognized the talent for hitting, you know, was thinking about Babe Ruth at some point sure. in that in that journey, and and that was another part of um, the the exhibition. I what I call the record chasers. We looked at Hank Aaron, who broke Babe Ruth's home run record. We looked at uh, we had an image of Roger Maris, who broke uh, Babe Ruth's single. Uh, Single season uh, hitting, record, yes. Right, of, of 60 right. home runs. Uh, Maris would hit 61. And Whitey Ford, I mean, so many people don't know that, that uh, Babe Ruth was a tremendous lefty pitcher. Yes. Um, that, that's really where he started uh, his career pitching. And Whitey Ford would break one of Ruth's uh, favorite records of... Um, 29 and a half or so um, uh, World Series innings without a hit. I believe that. Without it. allowing a run, I think it was. was without it? Yeah, allowing a run. That's right, yes. Yeah, 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 which stood for, what, 40 years or whatever it was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, coincidentally, <laughs> both records, both the um, single year home run record of Maris broke. You're right. Whitey Ford, those. <laughs> Both of those records were broken within about two weeks of each other. Wow, that's it interesting. Was the season, yeah. It was the um, season of 1961, and uh, it was that fall. Oh, interesting, interesting. So uh, the One Life series, are, um, can you tell us uh, who some of the other people are, uh, you're going to feature in the One Life series, or is that uh, privileged information? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, well, the exhibit that's up now is is a wonderful show about Sylvia Plath, the writer, poet, yes. Sylvia Plath. Right. And um, that's a lovely show with um, some uh, a lot of associative material that's not portraiture, but very interesting. Some of her early drawings as a, as a child, uh, some of her notes from her writings, and so. Um, uh, that's been a very popular exhibit. Um, and then down the road a little bit, um, I'm actually working on a Will Rogers show. Oh, I see. Right. So I've, I've been looking forward to that. Um, Will Rogers was another one, uh, person sort of bigger than life. But, um, and he was, uh, at the time of his death in 1935, he was the, he was 
Hollywood's biggest, greatest star, um, whether, you know, both female males. Um, right. Most people don't don't realize that either, but he did some 70 movies. So I'm looking forward to Will Rogers. Yeah, that, that should definitely be interesting. Okay, well, uh, James Barber of Smithsonian, I want to thank you very much for uh, joining us today and telling us about the uh, One Life exhibit of Babe Ruth that wound up uh, last year, and uh, we will definitely keep in touch. You take care. Thanks much now. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.